So what we're going to do this morning um, is, I, the talk is on harmony, but I first am going to just take us through an exercise with the harmonium, where we can actually hear what harmony is, at least in the sense of music, and it will be interactive. In fact, we'll need experiment, to divide It's up. also a good experiment to be able to hold your own note, even when other people next to you are singing a different note. And that's really the point of this whole thing, that God has a different note to sing through each one of us but it doesn't mean this is my note you're not singing my note you come sing my note if we're going to have harmony here that's not how it works that someone else has a different note to sing through themselves and so if we want to have harmony in this world that we need to learn to listen to what other people are doing listen to their ideas listen try to understand their point of view their perspective and see where they're coming from and there's times that you will be coming from absolute opposite directions on what is right but that's okay then we need as a group to try to understand what is trying to happen here those were Swami Kriyananda's words it's not about what do I think is trying to happen or what do you think is trying to happen there's a certain attitude and the highest thing is what does God want us to do together here and we can have harmony when we all come together under that one common father or mother of God Swami Kriyananda used to say that when he was with people who had difficult personalities, that it was difficult to have harmony as they would work together, that he himself then would just cease to have a personality. That whatever the person would say, it wouldn't bother him because it didn't matter. He would think, I don't even exist anyways. What does it matter if this person wants to yell or scream or say I'm right? It's fine. And of course we live in a difficult world that God made life difficult to understand so the play would go on and on. And there are times when we have to have principles and stand up for them and say, no matter what, it's not my principle, but it's a principle um, that I believe in, and so therefore that I have to take this position. But it's not about what you want personally, it's about what is right. Now, Master said um, a few quotes that I want to talk about this morning. And one is, um, when I am gone, only love can take my place. And that Paramahansa Yogananda is not here with us in a physical body. But even still, if we want to get to know him, if we want our lives to be in harmony with his life, we have to learn to love. And the point that I want to make on this particular quote is that we will not find God if we're in disharmony with our neighbors, if we're yelling and shouting at all of the people in traffic, and that if we just can't get along with others. That we first need to learn how to have harmony with others, and that means people of all types, not only people that are nice to us, well then of course it's easy to be nice to that type of person, but we need to also learn how to be harmonious and learn to love others. So, and then Master said another quote, and then I'll put these two together. And this was when he was in the body. He said, if there's any disharmony or inharmony in this place, and he was talking about the ashram, he said, I will be the first to leave. And I've meditated on those words, and it's not just when he was there in that physical body, in that particular ashram in Los Angeles, that even within our own group here, that if there's any disharmony, that Master's the first to go. That then we can't tune in, we can't feel his vibration anymore, we can't feel his guidance. And so I've drawn a line, a circle around this particular group right here, but even within your own self, that if there's any disharmony within your own self, that Master will be the first to go. That there's simply not enough room within your own being. It reminds me of these cowboy movies I used to watch when I was a child that one of the cowboys would say, this town just simply ain't big enough for the two of us. That one of us is gonna have to go. And that's just what it is with either God or this negative force that's trying to pull us down. That there, there's not enough room inside of you for both of those forces. That you need to decide, I'm either going one way or the other. That I used to be on the swim team in college and we had this big man of a coach and he would just yell at the swimmers and say you're floating you're floating stop floating and he wanted them to just swim faster but the thing here that comes to me because on the spiritual path you cannot just float that if you're just trying to just stay at neutral you think well I don't want to meditate to tomorrow tomorrow it's all right I just need to take it easy today if you're not going up you're going down. There's no floating happening on the spiritual path. And that's because these two forces, they're always warring within ourselves. But we need to more and more open ourselves up 
to the light and let God come in and let God do everything through us. So we have to, and this is a high thing, to learn how to become attuned to Paramahansa Yogananda. That we first start by reading the books and listening to Master's voice and learning the chants, but that's not enough. That we need to take our relationship with God even deeper. That we have to take it to that point where we feel that God is always there, that God is our best friend, and that we can talk to God. That we can tell God our biggest problems, our deepest secrets. God knows all of these things anyways. To try to hide those from God is absolute silliness. That God knows these things. But at least we can have one person. This is what love's really all about. That we have that one person in God that we can talk to. Really the Guru is joy personified. That he's perfect bliss. He is Satchit Anand. But he's also in the body. And it's God in the body that we can have. Now, we don't have Master in the body with us right now, but that's okay. There's still many saints that we can still tune into. And going through those saints, as I would go through Swami Kriyananda, to get to know Master. That someone asked me a question here the other day. I'm looking for who that person is. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's an interesting question. I used to have to, I had this worry of, is Master my guru? Is Swami Kriyananda my guru? And it was a deep worry within me until the one day I just got so, I don't know, anxious about it on the inside. I wrote Swami Kriyananda an email. I said, are you my guru? Is Paramahansa Yogananda my guru? And he wrote back and he just said, hmm, I see you have this difficulty in you. That was it. Just like one line and I went, oh God, like now it's even worse. Why don't these saints, why don't they just say things? Uh, but he was really saying that it's something that I have to figure out within my own self. And so um, a few maybe weeks later, I don't know the exact time frame, welcome, that um, I had this dream. And in the dream, um, Master was there. And Master just said a few words to me, but he said, I am 100% in him. And then his finger pointed to Swami Kriyananda, his gaze went, my gaze went. And I came to realize, I'm telling this story because it's a very important thing. It was much more than I didn't just need to worry which one is my guru. It was Swami Kriyananda was no longer Swami Kriyananda. That he had 100% gotten rid of the ego and the only thing that was flowing through him was Paramahansa Yogananda. And I realized that there was no need to have this dilemma within myself, but beyond that, that was the state that I wanted to achieve. That Paramahansa Yogananda used to say, uh, Yogananda no longer dwells in this body, that I killed Yogananda long ago, only God now dwells in this body. And Swami Kriyananda had the feeling that Swami Kriyananda no longer dwells in this body, only Paramahansa Yogananda dwells in this body. But that is the deep attunement. And that attunement is just another word for harmony, a feeling that you kind of have this deep uh, relationship with someone. And it's another point that I want to talk about this morning. Uh, it's lane dane. It's the reciprocity in relationships. That relationships cannot only be one way. That if you feel that you're only giving, giving, giving to your son or something like that, and it may be your duty as a parent to give and give, but you will have the deepest relationship with your son or whoever this is. It's not your son, it's your coworker, whatever. Any human relationship. If you also feel that your son also in some way is giving to you. And so we are not here to, just to say, oh God, please come. It's why I played the chant, I will find fault with my diving. That it's not just God who's going to, you, it's not enough to just say, okay, I open myself up to you, you meditate through me. Oh well, God didn't meditate through me this morning so well, oh well, too bad, maybe he'll do better tomorrow. That we have to do our part and it becomes a dynamic relationship of give and take and a really wonderful relationship where we really learn to listen to each other. Have any of you, all of you, seen this game Pictionary where you draw a picture and there's teams and they're trying to guess what's on that? There's a couple in Ananda, I won't say their names. Those two are in such deep attunement with each other, they'll play the game, they'll put like a dot on the paper and the other one will say, you know, birdhouse or something. And the rest of the audience is going, what in God? And then they'll do it again and again and again, that they don't even need that pencil and paper to communicate with one another, that they're just in such deep 
harmony and attunement with one another. And it starts again first in relationships with other human beings, and then it eventually goes on to that relationship with God. Now, who is God? Where is God? People say, well, if God's really there, who made God? Well, God is beyond all creation, that God is beyond all duality, that no one made God, that He's self-existent, He's always been there, He always will be there, He's beyond time. But to get to an understanding of those deep, deep things, that we have to go deep within our own selves and find that place on the inside, that there's no other way around that. And then gradually that this sense of self, it begins to melt away and we begin to see that God is absolutely in everything. Another trick to having harmony, let's say somebody comes up and does something bad to you. You can fill in the blank of what that bad thing is that may have maybe recently happened to you. Now, if you say, oh, Joe Smith, He's always bad. He does this thing again and again. I just, I don't like that guy anymore. That you're not going to have harmony with that person. But if you in your mind can say, a mistake was made. Okay, we all know Joe made a mistake. But we say, it's all right. Joe himself is not that mistake. And that Joe, maybe a week later, will realize the error, apologize, and then be able to go on and move on from that. So we have to separate that error from the human being. That that human being who he truly is deeply on the inside is God. And that it's Divine Mother herself who's coming and giving us all the different tests. Have you heard this story of there was a saint and he went out one day and he was playing with some children, but the children were acting kind of rough and he came back into the ashram and the other um, sadhus there said, my God, you're bleeding and there's cuts everywhere. What happened? He said, oh, we had so much fun. I was playing with the children. They were throwing rocks. And <coughs> the other side of said, well, gosh, what, I, this isn't quite right. He said, oh, no, it's fine. It was so much fun. That that sadhu neglected to see that the children were throwing rocks at him. And he just saw that they were just throwing rocks, that he absolutely had no more ego left there. And we really want to get to that state where if people hurl insults at us, if people even give physical abuse, that it's all right. Now, we don't have to go searching for this physical abuse, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> It happens sometimes. <laughs> it happens as you go on the spiritual path that you realize it's all God and that you realize that there's something inside of yourself that's invincible and that can never be touched. But as you start feeling this on the inside, you might, there might be this little tendency to want to experiment with it. Don't. <laughs> that God will give you the exact tests that you need when you need them. Um, Another point that I want to bring up in harmony is that I've seen within Ananda that when there's a small group of people, it doesn't take many. If it's just two or three, four people, whatever the case is, but they really, they care about one another, that they love one another, and that when they make phone calls to one another, it's just some energy flows where it's like, oh, okay, you can't do that? Oh, it's all right, I'll do that. Or, oh, well, it's a type of attitude that just says we're in this together, that we are one. When that attitude's there, there's nothing that can break that. And I wasn't there, thank God, I shouldn't say that, they don't make me go through it, but when <laughs> Ananda Village, they went through the lawsuits, and it was a tough time that uh, the other organization was flying planes over, dropping leaflets, they were saying all these negative, wrong things, and people, imagine you're at your home in this peaceful, you know, wilderness, and these leaflets are dropping they're saying all these negative things about your guru and everything and yet there was a core magnetism there that absolutely nothing no matter what lawsuit no matter what financial things negative things being dropped from the sky nothing could break that magnetism apart and we have to learn to make that magnetism we'll make it as a group here but even that as an individual that a time comes in your life where you realize it really doesn't matter how many friends you have on Facebook. That what matters is do you have a few relationships where you're there for each other, no matter what. 
thick and thin that and will those relationships will they last till the end of your life if you get sick or if you have financial problems will those people be there to help lift you up and it's those few relationships and building them that those friends like that those are your jewels in um, your treasure chest I wear this nine uh, gem bangle but I often feel that like each friend that I have that there's some that are very close and that I have to give those friends energy and that you can't just have friendships if you don't give them energy they they wither up and they die just like a plant that you have to water every day you have to make sure that it gets that sunshine and so each one of us that we have to go into our life and say who are these people that are really really special to me because that harmony that I was talking about when negativity is coming at you the hardest of all kinds that you need those friends and honestly here's the deal that these friendships are built through many incarnations. That Master said that if you have a deep friendship in this life, it didn't just start in this life. It wasn't that you guys just seemed to already have that harmony, that attunement. That it had already been going on for many lifetimes. Um, and it's an interesting thing to think about. I've been in some of these corporate workshops and I've even done some of these team building exercises myself. And it's a fun thing to do, it's good. But if you could really see through time and through space you would see that even in a corporation when there's a group of people in there who are really moving and making things happen that that harmony they've built it hasn't just been because of one you know game they played with a marble in some uh, corporate workshop it's been many many lifetimes that they've been building that harmony and knowing that they're there for one another and let's face it Finding God is not a one incarnation job, that it takes some time. That when I first read about Kriya Yoga in the autobiography of a yogi, I said, it was some part that said, this, this is it. This is the thing that if I get this Kriya Yoga, at that point, I wasn't aware enough to know the importance of attunement with the guru also and how much of a part of the equation that was. But it was just that Kriya Yoga. I said, I have, no matter what, I mean, everything else in my life went back seat, back burner, uh, that I have to find this Kriya Yoga. I'm sure that I'd been practicing in a past lifetime. And I'm sure that many of you here also have been practicing in a past lifetime. And wherever we are with it in this lifetime, we have to just keep <coughs> pushing forward until we find it. So anyway, back to those friendships, build that harmony until you see that point where that you see is just God within your friends. That once um, some people were helping Master get into a car and they opened the car for him and um, they said to him, oh Master, you're so kind to us. And he was saying, no, you're being so kind to me. And ultimately Master, rather than having that kind of love go back and forth that was superficial, just said, it's God loving God. And we won't actually be able to love the Guru until we can have these relationships with human beings like that. There's one more point I want to make and then we'll meditate together. And this point is that when we're trying to have harmony with one another, that there's a balance between personal relationships and impersonal relationships. It's very easy to have an impersonal relationship with someone and be kind to them. Let's say um, you're in this neighborhood, not even your own neighborhood, and you go to the Subjiwala, that you can smile at him and say, and you can do a little bargaining and get the right price and, you know, God bless you, you're such a great Subjiwala, and smile and it's <laughs> fine, all right? It's very easy because you know you'll never see him again. And even if it doesn't go that smoothly and the bargaining doesn't go so well, and he's yelling at you, you can still smile, give him a few extra rupees, God bless. It's not a problem. You know you're never going to see him again. But let's take that one step closer right next to your own home where you know you're going to be seeing that guy and that if he takes those few extra rupees that then that trend might just carry on and that then it becomes a little bit harder and you feel that you have to get a little more stern. Or a personal relationship, let's say you have a son and you see that he's going off in this direction and you, you're old enough now to know that if he carries on in that direction for the next 20 years, it's not going to be a good thing. So that you really have to use your willpower and try to force a little bit to get him to go in the right direction. But then you have to live in the same home. And the more you yell and give that force, the more resistance there is. And so the point here is that these personal relationships they're the most difficult. That Master said 
that we can choose our spiritual family, but God gives us our birth family that we're so close into so that we can learn how to love everybody, absolutely no matter what. Um, and we have to, that's the, it's the real like testing ground. It's the real battleground for spirituality. The same thing happens that at Ananda, we're slowly doing it, we'll get there, building these spiritual communities. And, um, but when you live in a spiritual community, when you live in a monastery with a tight group of people that it's one thing to meditate every day, but then when you have to work together every day in close proximity, you begin to realize you see how spiritual you actually are. That it's no longer just a put-up job, as they say, or just a show that you're putting on to your friends. That you really get to see, are there little things within me that are burning hot right now? And it's so easy, here's the trick to all of life. It is so easy to say, it's his fault, he did it. Uh, I'm a saint, I, I don't know, I, I'm doing just fine here, but it's his fault. But the deal is, it's never his fault, ever, ever. That the blame is always on us. That as you begin to understand magnetism very deeply, you begin to understand that you have attracted these different situations. And so that guy is just there as a mirror. Just a mirror showing us who we truly are, that we might have this fault, that fault. So forgive everybody else. And if you see in your mirror, my God, that's not quite right. Then you go home and you think, what can I do to perfect myself? And then the last thing on this personal, impersonal relationship, that as we begin to have a relationship with the guru, whether he's in the body or not, um, that you begin to find the balance between the personal relationship and the impersonal relationship. And there has to, it becomes a perfected relationship, that there has to be a little bit of both, that it can't just be completely impersonal, that you have to, every once in a while, have that little personal touch and see that it's both and. It's not just God in the body, and that you just never even have to be in the same room or say hi or that it can just be completely withdrawn and distant um, that, that somehow it just doesn't get you there and it can't be too personal either where you're always there just touching the guru's feet that master had a disciple named leo cox and he obviously was in love with master a very easy person to be in love with um, and so much in love that he would just poster pictures of master all over his room and one day Master came in his room and was like, what is this? <laughs> Get to know me in meditation, that this isn't what it's about. And so Leo Cox had gone too far on the side of uh, just this outward devotion and seeing him only in form. And so we learned how to do both and, of see the guru in form and be grateful for all of creation, for all of this beautiful form that Divine Mother has made, and also see the force behind all of the creation and that tremendous power that the Guru actually is that is creating and dissolving galaxies, literally. So as we all learn to cooperate and work together here and work together in harmony, we will begin to understand and see that really it's God who's been doing everything and that we merely are instruments of God and that we simply want to be better and better channels for God. Thank you so much. We'll spend the rest.